In our latest curb le shower project, we ended up using subway tile. And what made this a little bit challenging is the window. So in this video, we're gonna give you tips on how we started to tile this shower wall using subway tile up to the bottom of that window. It was critical to get the first row of tile absolutely level. So we put our laser level to the top of the tile and then we used a really great latex modified thin set mortar. As you can see here, we put a dab of it on the wall and it's not sagging. And this indicates it's mixed properly and it's a great thin set. So we used our directional troweling here. We set our first tile and we centered it on the wall in this particular shower. And then we checked every tile to make sure that the top of the tile lined up with the laser level. And if it didn't, we had to back cut it using our angle grinder and diamond blade. So in this case, we're just making sure that these tiles meet up with the curvature of the shower pan and we're cleaning the grout joints as we go with our, our brush. So here, we're just checking to make sure that these tiles meet up with the laser level. We're cutting them with the CGX 115 diamond blade by Montelie and we're back buttering these tiles with the flat side of the trowel. This really helps out with the 95% coverage that we need for this wet area per the TCNA. So as you can see here we're just making our way across this first row of tile back cutting them and making sure that we have our expansion and contraction joint between those tiles and the shower pan as well. So again, that's about 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch. So we're just getting the measurement for the last two tiles here that flank either side of this first row, cutting them to size with the angle grinder and then back buttering them. You can also use a wet saw, but we just found it to be easier to use our angle grinder in this particular case. So we're just cleaning the tiles as we go to make sure we don't have any thin set build up between the grout joints. The expansion and contraction joint on the main wall will be hidden by the tile on the plumbing wall. So we wanted to indicate that. And we're just centering this tile over top of our first course. And we're making sure that it's absolutely center using our measuring tape and our laser level. And we're just adding 1 16th horseshoe shims between every tile so that we have a consistent grout joint. You can also add those shims on the vertical grout joints, but we didn't. We just added it up in this particular case. And we're feeling for any lippage as we go. That's really important because you don't want lippage for these little tiles. And it didn't really make sense to use a leveling system. We're getting the measurement here for the smaller pieces. And one way that we saved time on this project was batch processing these little cuts using our DeWalt wet saw, which by the way is our favorite wet saw. And that sped up the process of tiling the first several rows of this subway tile shower. Again, we're just continuing with our directional troweling. We're setting the first tile, making sure that it's centered on the previous row. And then we're going up the wall using our horseshoe shims to get our consistent grout joint. So again, this is our methodology. And we did this the entire way up the wall until we met with the window in this shower. Unfortunately, the window could not be removed, so we had to work around that, and we'll give you some tips on how we did the planning. So again, we're just making sure that our grout joint is still there between this row of tile and our plumbing wall. You need to have that expansion contraction joint, and we set our laser level on the top course as we went up the wall to make sure that it continued to stay level. So we're at our top row here. Just take a look at what this looks. This is, looks like in a pretty good position to me because by the time I put my tile on here, we'll have almost three quarters of a tile. So that looks, that's a that's a pretty good position. That's a large tile to be coming up against here. It'll look nice. So we're gonna go ahead and install our bottom plate. We're actually, I'm gonna take that back. We're just gonna, we're gonna allow this to stick up past our tile, proud of it so that we can apply thin set underneath of here and then fill in the pieces to meet up with our bull nose afterwards. This is all pretty flat, but it's just going to be easier to have uniform cut pieces since this is all level and just just allow enough for thin set. You can always build up your tile on top of here with more additional thin set to come out even with this. So let's just make this two and a half inches. We'll make this whole row two and a half inches place our bull nose and then fill in our sill afterwards. So we did cut down the height of the tiles that are directly underneath this window. And that was done so that we could fit the bull nose in like so. So we just centered the bull nose on that last course of tile and we continued to use our horseshoe shims. And the reason why we're doing the smaller tile just underneath the window is you won't really notice the difference uh, when we go outside the window width. So again, we're just doing this underneath the 
bull nose so that we can make the bull nose look good. So again, we're just gonna make this bull nose proud and then fill in the inset to make this work. Let's just see where we will be. Yeah, so we'll be good here because we'll have basically our full tile. We'll have a pretty good sized tile on our opposite end here lining with this. So we'll basically have like a two and a half inch piece going up along here, which will look good. Again, if, if this was like, say if this was an inch, I would just bring this out a little bit further and try to get a bigger piece against here. But since we're like, you know, with almost a half a tile there, that's gonna look pretty good. So we'll just put our laser on our bull nose pieces to make that sure that stays level when we put it up here. So we'll basically be just notching this So two and a half inches and then notching down. We always use a laser level, but in particular, when you're tiling around the window like this, it's really important as you can see here because it helps that subway tile be level, but also your bull nose be plumb with the window so that when you're climbing the wall, you know that your bull nose is gonna continue to stay aligned and that'll give you a consistent spacing on the walls that flank the window. So as you can see, we're just filling in the rest of the tile on that last row that's just below the bull nose, and we're gonna be climbing the wall and maintaining that pattern. But again, our bull nose is nice and plumb, and we just kept our laser on it as we went up along the window edge. So here we're maintaining our pattern, and yes, we have smaller tiles on each side, but we felt that that didn't look bad, and as you can see here, we went the entire way above the window maintaining that pattern, and we have our bull nose that picture frames the window. Inside the window, we did have a consistent grout joint and left about a 16th inch between the tile and the window. We're really happy with how this curbless shower turned out. Obviously, the subway tile is a classic look, but overall, that combined with the frameless glass shower doors really makes it look great. We're gonna put the rest of the video showing how we tiled this curbless shower into the bathroom repair tutor video library. You can click here to check out the video library. It's really a great resource. And if you're redoing a bathroom or you do bathroom remodels, it can be really, really helpful. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.